Hi everyone, I'm Kara Sundlin. It is Thursday, December 2nd, 2021. Let's take a look at what was happening in Connecticut history today. One year ago, the state became the first in the nation to make sure every child had a device to learn remotely. Chief Capitol reporter Susan Raff brought us a story from Hartford Public High School. COVID uh, doesn't stop for the seasons and the education can't stop uh, due to COVID. At the height of the pandemic, Governor Lamont promised to make sure every child had the tools to learn remotely. And now that promise has been fulfilled. Connecticut will be the first state to provide digital learning devices to students pre-K through 12th grade. It really gives us an opportunity to equal the uh, level the playing field, right? Um, to, to say that all students now in Connecticut have an opportunity to access blended learning in a way that only some students did before the pandemic. Governor Lamont and the state's education commissioner made the announcement at Manchester High School. $70 million in public funding and private donations have been used to purchase and distribute nearly 150,000 laptops and more than 40,000 home internet connections. But this may only be part of what's needed for success. That's just like, like a third of the battle. Millie Arseniegas is the director of Hartford Parent University, a parent-led group to help families get the most out of education. The reality, however, is that even with Chromebooks or laptops, students of color and those who live in poorer communities may have additional challenges. What I'm hearing the most from parents is the technology side of it. So, you know, they don't know if they're doing things correctly or if their 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 children are logging on correctly or what they're seeing uh, is the actual homework. On this day five years ago, a young skateboarder was killed in a tragic accident. Reporter Evan White spoke to his friend. Jonathan DeGray lived with Jeremy Mercier. They could not have been closer. He was like my brother. DeGray tells Eyewitness News Mercier was on his way to help him after his truck broke down in a parking lot near Route 5. Around 1 o'clock this morning, police got a call that a body was laying by the side of the road. Route 5 was shut down in both directions as officers began their investigation. Chief Carl Sferraza says Mercier was skateboarding by the side of the road on Route 5 when someone hit him from behind. Based on what we saw there this morning, I think it's impossible that someone wouldn't have known they had struck someone. Police are trying to identify the car by debris left at the crash. They're also speaking with neighbors to see if anyone may have witnessed or captured video of the collision. They say the street was well lit and Mercier was in a visible area when it happened. Meanwhile, for friends who had become like family to Jeremy, they're putting faith in police to find whoever's responsible. There's just horrible people out there and some person, I don't know how they're going to be able to live with themselves after knowing that Hanneman didn't even, didn't even stop. Ten years ago, closing arguments began in the case of one of the suspects in the Cheshire home invasion where Dr. Bill Pettit's entire family, his wife and two daughters, was killed. He's described himself as, quote, one of the most hated people in America. And more than four years after taking part in a crime that turned a tight Cheshire community upside down, Joshua Komisarjewski could be just days away from learning whether he'll spend the rest of his life in prison or if he gets sentenced to death. Closing arguments are set for today in the penalty phase of the 2007 Cheshire Home Invasion trial. Back in October, this same jury needed just two days to convict Commissar Jeffsky of killing Jennifer Hawk Pettit and her two daughters, Haley and Michaela. During the penalty phase, jurors heard from Commissar Jeffsky's parents, his sister, church friends, and an ex-girlfriend. They described his troubled past, claiming he was sexually abused and never got the psychological help he needed. They also watched videotaped testimony of Commissar Jeffsky's nine-year-old little girl. The prosecution was quick to remind jurors that Commissar Jeffsky had been in and out of prison, committed two burglaries the night before the attack, and sexually assaulted and killed Michaela Pettit. Prosecutors pointing out he did this to a little girl just two years older than his daughter's age right now. That's a look at Today in History.